Are you in this situation? You have a bunch of materials that you want your bullet to play a unique particle system whenever it impacts there. You have some stone, you have a player, you have concrete, you have dirt, you have water. There's a bunch of different stuff that you need a different particle system to play whenever your bullet makes impact to add in that layer of realism into your game. This video is going to show you how you can do that. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today we're going to take a look at how to implement bullet impact effects that are dependent on the material that the bullet or your projectile makes impact with. That way you can have a unique particle system play based on the realistic material that they're actually hitting. That way you don't have sparks flying out of a player instead of blood. And you don't have just a generic bland particle system that has no realism in your game. We're going to start out with a really basic scene. The layout of it's really not important, so don't worry about that. The important thing we're doing is we're going to apply a different material to different walls so we can show that our bullets making impact with different materials will spawn different particle systems. But before we get to that, we will set up a default particle system that's really ugly because I'm really not particularly artistic. So it's going to be a simple particle system that will play whenever we have a bullet impact with anything. And then we'll bring in the Unity Particle Pack to make our bullet impacts more realistic. And then once we've implemented all of this, we get a little bit crazy and really ramp up our bullet spawn speed to have all kinds of cool effects going on at the same time. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out and some other cool perks. If you're trying to just follow along, you can create a level similar to this. The layout of it's not particularly important. It's just a floor encaged in a box with some obstacles in the middle that are at least one meter tall because our nav mesh agent is two meters tall. There's nothing special about this right now. They're just pro builder cubes that have been set out on the level. The first thing we'll look at is the physics layers. You can get here by going to the project settings and clicking on physics. I've added three new layers, player, floor, and bullet layer. Those are set up in the tags and layers section of the project settings. All three of those layers will collide with default. Player and floor will also collide with floor. The important thing here though is the bullet only collides with default. If we select the floor, I'll change that to be on the floor layer. In the hierarchy, I'll select everything that's under world geometry that's not the floor. So that's all of the walls, including the exterior walls. I'll attach the nav mesh modifier component to all of these objects. Check override area and set the area to be not walkable. That way when we bake the nav mesh, the nav mesh agent will not think that they can walk on these walls. If we then take a look at the scripts in here, you'll notice that we already have an object pool and player movement. In AI series part one, that's where we first did the player movement, so I'm not going to go over that. There's also an object pool because we're going to be spawning many bullets, but we are going to create two new scripts one called player action and one called bullet. We're going to open up the player movement first because we want to make some additional changes on top of whatever we do to move. What we're going to do is check if the agent is close to its destination and then we're going to do basically the same thing we do if the player clicks mouse zero or the left mouse button. That's to send out a ray from the camera, do a ray cast to see if we hit anything on our layer mask and if we do we're going to make the agent look at that point. This is going to allow the nav mesh agent to look at our pointer to do aiming whenever we're going to shoot bullets. If you want the nav mesh agent to always look at the cursor, you just remove the top if on line 30. If we hop back to the Unity editor, select our player, we'll see that we already have a nav mesh agent, a capsule collider, and a rigid body on our player. The rigid body is also marked as kinematic, that's an important piece. We'll then attach the player movement, drag the main camera to the camera reference, and set the layer mask to be floor. And we can see that if I click, my nav mesh agent will move to that location, and whenever they get there, they will start looking at wherever my pointer is. Great. So now I can move and then look at something. Now I'd like to be able to shoot. Let's open up the bullet class. We'll attach a required component type of rigid body because we want to use rigid body physics for a bullet. I'm going to add some public variables here. Public float auto destroy time, set that to be five by default. Public float move speed, set that to be two by default. And public rigid body, rigid body. I'll then make a private const string disable method name, which will be just disable. And on awake, we're going to assign the rigid body to be git component rigid body. And I actually 
have noticed I forgot that we'd like to have an impact particle system. So I'll make a public global object impact particle system. So the way these bullets are going to work is whenever we click, let's say the right mouse button, we'll start spawning these bullets and they will shoot out from our player in a straight line. If maybe we set the speed to be too low of these bullets, maybe they will stay alive for a really long time. That's why we have an auto destroy time. After five seconds, we're going to go ahead and just disable these objects. We're going to use the mono behavior invoke functionality to call the disable method that we're going to create at the very end of this class. And we're going to invoke that after the five seconds after we enable it. So on private void enable, what we'll first do is cancel invoke disable method name. Invoke is not canceled automatically whenever you disable a game object. So whenever we enable a bullet, we want to make sure that if we got this from the pool, there's not a dangling invoke waiting. So it'll happen in like a second and the bullet will just disappear halfway to wherever it's going. And then we'll invoke the disable method name and provide the auto destroy time there. Next, we'll make public void spawn. We're just going to take one parameter here, vector three forward, because we want to make sure that our bullet knows the direction it needs to go. And we'll say rigid body that add force forward times move speed, set the force mode to be velocity change. In your game, maybe you also provide the damage or some other setup type variables that you need here. So next, we're going to use private void on collision enter. Now on collision enter is a little bit different than on trigger enter because it gives us more information about where we hit some other object. And to make on collision enter work, you need to make sure that the bullet is not a trigger. So before on the other videos, we always made sure that the bullet was a trigger so we could use on trigger enter. But this works a little bit differently. We should not have it be a trigger because it's actually going to do a collision. So on collision, we can say contact point contact equals collision dot get contact zero. And you actually may be tempted to use collision dot contacts, but this is not a good practice because it produces memory garbage. Using get contacts prevents that garbage collection. Collection. And since we're going to have a lot of bullets, potentially, it's really important to not generate garbage here. If we do hit something and we know the contact point, let's go ahead and get our object pool. So object pool pool equals object pool create instance impact particle system. And I'm going to provide five by default. So that way we have five impact as a buffer. And the object pool that we're using here, if there's already an instance of an object pool for this particular poolable object, it will give us that same instance and not create a new one. Then we'll do poolable object pooled object equals pool dot get object and that also is pretty guaranteed to give us a result because if there's not enough objects in the pool it will automatically create a new one for us now once we have an instance of this particle system we'll do pooled object dot transform dot position equals contact dot point so that's wherever we had our bullet hit something else we'll also say pooled object dot transform dot forward equals contact dot normal that way our particle system is facing out from that contact point and then after we have made contact with something what we're going to want to do is disable this game object so we'll say disable and then we'll define that next say private void disable we'll set the rigid body velocity to be zero and we will also disable this game object we're also going to change the bullet class to extend from the poolable object class instead of mono behavior next let's take a look at player action we'll make a private serialized field bullet called bullet prefab. We'll make a private serialized field float called shoot delay. Set that to be 0.25 by default. So that's four bullets a second we'll be able to shoot. We'll attach a private nav mesh agent agent and serialize that as well. A private float last shoot time that we'll use to manage when we last shot so we know when we can shoot again. And on update, what we'll do is say if input.get key, keycode.mouse1, so that's the right mouse button, and last shoot time plus shoot delay is less than time.time. .time. So that means we've waited at least our shoot delay. Then we will do object pool pool equals object pool dot create instance bullet prefab again passing five. That gives us either a new pool or a reference to our pool for this bullet. Then we'll do bullet bullet equals pool dot get object as bullet, which converts our poolable object that get object returns to a bullet because our bullet is a poolable object. And then we'll set up some stuff about the bullet. So we'll set the bullet transform position to be the agent transform position plus vector three up because the agent transform position is actually on the floor. So we want to be up one meter, which is from the center of that agent because our agent is two meters tall. We'll do bullet.transform.rotation is the agent's rotation. And then we'll do bullet.spawn and pass in the agent transform forward here. And then finally set the last shoot time to be time.time. .time. The other thing here is we're using input.get key instead of input.get key up. And what that does is checks if we're still holding the button instead of watching for whenever we release it. That way we can hold the right mouse button and still be shooting. Let's hop back to the Unity editor, select the player and attach the player action script. 
we'll see that the bullet actually already had the bullet script on it. So make sure that you add that here and you deselect is trigger from capsule collider if that's checked. We're not going to change anything on the bullet, but we are going to make sure that the rigid body has a frozen rotation so it doesn't spin for any reason whenever we're shooting the bullet and that the capsule collider is approximately the same size as our model, which is just a capsule. Then you can either create a new particle system or look at this default impact particle system that I've already put together, which you can see if I play it just shoots out some default particles in a cone from a starting point. The way that we did this was I set the duration to be very short, the start lifetime to be 0.25, start speed to be 5. We're going to make sure that the stop action is disable because whenever it's done playing we'd like this to disable itself so it gets re-added to the object pool. I left everything else basically the same as default in the first panel of the particle system. If I open up the emission, what we're going to do is set up the bursts to spawn probably a fewer than this because the particles are pretty big. I put it at 30, we'll change it down to something like 10 and make sure that there's no rate over time particle spawning because we only want this initial burst whenever we make impact. We don't want some trickling ones after that. If we take a look at the shape, we can see that it's a cone with a 25 degree angle and a radius of 0.1. The last important thing on this prefab is to make sure that it has a poolable object script attached because we're going to use this in an object pool. We'll drag the default impact particle system to the bullet prefab's impact particle system reference. We'll drag the bullet to the player action bullet prefab and the agent to the player action nav mesh agent reference. If we then click play and I right click and move the mouse around, we'll see that the bullets run around and whenever they make contact with something, they'll spawn that impact particle system. That's great. So now we have some kind of bullet impact with particle systems where they shoot out from wherever the bullet made contact. But what if we have more than one texture? So I've already imported this asset, the Unity Particle Pack from the asset store. It's free from Unity. If you do import on this, it will warn you that it's going to overwrite your project settings, but you can just disable importing those and it will not change any of your project settings. If you just select effect examples and unselect everything else, you'll only get the particle system stuff and none of the example scenes, none of the project settings, overwriting, anything like that. If you click import here, you'll get the effect examples into your project, which if you've checked out this from the GitHub repo, which there's a link in the description below, all the prefabs that you see in the main asset folder that are talking about stone, metal, and flesh impacts reference these. So if you import this, they should have all the references hooked up already because all I did on those was convert them to look like what we did on the default impact based on the flesh, metal, and stone impacts prefabs that are here on the weapon effects. What I'm going to do is apply materials to different objects. I'll select some of these kind of cover looking ones and apply them to be the stone. I'll select the outside to set the default checkerboard material. I'll select one of these large wall pieces, set it to be metal, and one of them to be flesh. If we then click play and do the shooting, it kind of doesn't look as nice, right? Because the particle system's not in alignment with all these objects that we're hitting. Let's make a new class to manage this called the Bullet Impact Manager. If we hop over to Visual Studio, we'll make a public class called Bullet Impact and we'll add the system.serializable attribute to that. That's going to have a public material material and a public poolable object collision particle system. Then in the bullet impact manager, we'll say a public list bullet impact called bullet impacts equals to a new list of bullet impact. Then we'll also add a public dictionary material to object pool bullet impact dictionary and set it to be a new dictionary. You might ask why do we have this duplicated effort? It's a lot easier to find our object pool given a material because we know that whenever a bullet makes contact with another object, we can get the material from it. Since we know that, we're probably going to make a function that accepts a material and then we want to spawn one of these poolable objects there. We want to easily be able to go from a material to an object pool so we can create these poolable objects that we've defined in the bullet impact list. We'll also add a private int particle system buffer and set that to be five by default. That's how many particle systems for each each material will create by default and then the object pool will expand in size as needed over that. Then I'm going to turn this into a singleton class which if you're not familiar with this pattern it allows us to reference bullet impact manager dot instance with a capital I and that will refer to us a static instance of the bullet impact manager. That way we don't have to do something like game object dot find out objects of type bullet impact manager whenever we want to reference it. It's a lot more efficient to do it this way. But to manage that what we need to do is in the private void awake check if there's an instance that is not equal to null. So if we already have an instance of this class, we want to log an error saying that there's already one of these that exists and we're going to destroy the new one because we only want one instance of this to exist. Then we'll destroy that game object and do an early return. 
in the event that we do not already have an instance, so this is the first one created, we'll say instance equals this, and then we'll set up the dictionary. So we'll do for each bullet impact impact in bullet impacts, Bullet impact dictionary dot add impact dot material object will create instance impact dot collision particle system and passing in the particle system buffer. At the end of awake, we have constructed our dictionary based on whatever we set up in the inspector on that list because remember that the inspector will not serialize a dictionary by default. Then we'll make a public void spawn bullet impact that'll take a vector3 position, vector3 forward, and a material hit material. So we'll check if the bullet impact dictionary does contain this material. So if we've set that up, then we will do spawn bullet impact, passing in the position forward and then the particle system that we want to spawn. And we get that by doing bullet impact dictionary keyed by hit material dot get object. In the case that we do not have in our dictionary this material, so maybe we misconfigured the dictionary or we don't want to have to configure hundreds of different materials, we want there to be a generic one, we'll choose the first one in this list as the default one. So we'll call do spawn bullet impact with the position, the forward, and then the bullet impact dictionary keyed by bullet impact indexed by zero dot material and then get that object. So as long as we have at least one impact in our list, we know that we will always spawn some impact particle system. Then let's go ahead and make that do spawn bullet impact. We'll do private void do spawn bullet impact that takes the position, the forward, and then the poolable object that we'll call particle system. Then we will set that particle system transform position to be the position and the forward to be the forward. Any other effects that you want to have happen could happen in this function. Now that we've set the bullet impact manager, let's update the bullet to use that bullet impact manager. So I'm going to remove that impact particle system from the bullet because we're going to use the bullet impact manager instead. And everything about generating this impact particle system, I'm going to remove and do instead if collision.gameObject.tryGet component passing in a renderer, and then we'll do out renderer renderer. So that way we'll have a reference to the renderer if this returns true. And if it does, we'll say bullet impact manager dot instance dot spawn bullet impact passing in the contact dot point, the contact dot normal, and the render dot shared material. And that'll give us the first material on this renderer. And then if it does not have a renderer, we're going to do the same thing, just passing in null for the material because well, we hit something, but it doesn't have a renderer on it. So we'll use the default particle system. What I'm going to do to set up the bullet impact manager is create a new empty game object, call it bullet impact manager and attach the bullet impact manager script. We see that we have four materials here. So I'll set the first one to be default. Remember that we're using the first one as default in case the material is not matched. And I'll set that to be this checkerboard material we have on the outside walls. The second one I'll set up to be the flesh surface and use the flesh impact. And I'll do the same for the stone and the metal. That should be all that we need to set up for it. So if I click play and I start shooting, we'll see when I hit the stone, I get a stone impact. When I hit the flesh, I get a flesh impact. And when I hit the metal, I get this metal impact. So it looks pretty good. Also, if I hit the wall on the outside, I get that default kind of ugly particle system, right? So I think that looks pretty cool, but I did have a little bit of fun making this video. I set the shoot delay to be 0 0.05. Then I can do this kind of minigun like shooting thing where I shoot all the bullets and you'll see a bunch of particle systems come up. It looks, I think it looks actually really good. This is better than I expected it to end up looking. And then I got a little bit more crazy. Set the shoot delay to be 0 0.01 and we shoot 100 <laughs> bullets a second. All of these bullets are flying around. We get a lot of impacts. I think it looks awesome, honestly. Unity did a really good job making these particle systems. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video and you understand how to create this data setup so we can have a particle system that will play based on the material so that way those two can be doing a realistic effect whenever a bullet or any other projectile impacts one of those materials. If you have been getting value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday and sometimes on other days too. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing bullet impacts into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.